Praise the Lord again. Praise Him. Amen. Give God some praise in this place. Not but for 
to steal and to kill and to destroy. Mm -hmm. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Once again, verse 10, he said, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, I want to simply talk to you briefly tonight and teach from the subject intentionality. 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 Let us pray before you take the seat. Our Father, the God, we praise you, we thank you, we magnify you, we glorify your name tonight. Yes. God, we pray that you will just saturate our very being with your word. Mm -hmm. Lord, when we leave here, let us have a different perspective. Let us have a different appetite. Let us go to a whole new level in you. We pray that you will cleanse us and cleanse our hearts, God. We pray that you will empower us in this particular moment. As a matter of fact, Lord, we surrender all to you. We ask that you just can take control of our mind, heart, soul, and body. We don't just say that, but we mean it. And we surrender all to you. Open up your word to us. Open up our eyes to see it and our ears to hear it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I have the particular assignment tonight uh, twofold. First of all, to talk prophetically to you about the season that we're in. And then number two, God said to make sure that on tonight to encourage the man and woman of God in Amen. this particular house. Amen? Amen. In our church, and I've been preaching this everywhere I go, and I began to pray about what to speak on tonight, God reminded me that he told me last year, he said, your first assignment when you go everywhere is to talk about the season that we're in, the prophetic season, the fact that we need to be intentional about everything that we do. We have labeled to 2016 at Larger Life Christian Ministries where I'm so honored to serve as pastor as the year of intentionality. My brothers and my sisters, we must understand that nothing in life just happens. I know sometimes we go through things and we say, well, it was a coincidence or it just happened to happen that way. But I'm here to let you know that with God and in this world, nothing just happens. All right. Amen. Say that. Say nothing. 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 Just happens. Just, just happens. happens. My brothers and my sisters, it's imperative for us to understand that in this time and the season that we live in, God said we cannot afford to waste any time. Somebody say time. Time. As a matter of fact, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14, uh, Paul writes these words. He says, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of God is, and that ye be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Paul is simply teaching the church at Ephesus. He says, listen here, don't lay around and be lazy and let life pass you by. But rather, I need you to be aware. I need you to be awake. I need you to understand what's going on in the world around you. And I need you to be intentional about your time. Somebody say time. Time. So time waits for no one. And God is saying in this particular season that as believers, we cannot afford to waste any time. Somebody say time. One more time. 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 Now secondly, during the in this season that we're in, we are Fastly approaching the second coming of Jesus Christ. He's coming back to rapture of his church. We see things happening in the world that we don't understand. We were watching on TV even before we left home. And everybody's on high alert following the attacks in Belgium. And they just arrested the guy that attacked him in France. And all those different things. And everybody's afraid. Everybody's wondering what's going on. But my brothers and my sisters, every time I see adversity in the world, even though my heart is troubled and to, to see people hurting, there's a part of my spirit that begins to shout because I know that Jesus Christ is soon to come. Are you going to help me? Come on now. Come on. So, uh, secondly, most, not only must we not waste any time in this season, but secondly, God said it is imperative as believers that we understand and have the spirit of Issachar. Somebody say Issachar. Issachar. In 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, it says the children of Issachar were men that had an understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. My brothers and my sisters, as believers in Christ, 
we must not only understand the fact that Jesus is soon to come, but we need to know what our job and our assignment is in this season. Let I, may I let you know it is simply that which is the theme of this revival, and that is to take Jesus Christ to the street. See, my brothers right. and my sisters, people are looking for answers, but Paul teaches us that we need to be ready to give an answer. So my question tonight is when people question you about the world events and what's going on in society, what answer do you have for them? Somebody say Jesus. 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 In this season, not only must we not waste any time, not only must we have the spirit of this car, but it is imperative that we are intentional about every Thing that we do. In other words, my brothers and my sisters, it is time out for just walking around and being all willy nilly. Uh -huh. Even if we are sitting at home and resting and relaxing, we need to be intentional about our rest and our relaxation. Uh -huh. Just the other day, I, mean, I didn't make it this week because I've been kind of busy, but I normally get up early in the morning and I go to work out about 6 30 in the morning. I go to the gym and to work out in one particular day. I was going to work out and I, I was trying to take my iPad and I was trying to have a, a pad on the side so I could work out and take some notes and keep working. And God said, listen, son, he said, this is your time to work out. This is your time to wind down. I need you to be intentional about your time to wind down. He said, what I want you to start doing is make sure that you schedule your time wisely. All You're right. going to work when you get in the office, but when you get in the gym, I need you to work out. I need you to be intentional about everything that you do. Mm -hmm. Stress has become a big thing amongst people mm -hmm. in the body of Christ. But God is saying, what I want you to do is I want you to become more focused. I want you to become more intentional, and I need you to stop being so stressed out because I've got everything taken care of. Somebody right. says taken care of. Taken care, care of. My brothers and sisters, God showed me this at one time. I said, well, you said be intentional about everything. He said, let me take something as simple as going to the restroom. You have a purpose, either one or two. Hello. Amen. <laughs> so you don't need to waste time in the restroom. If you're in the mirror, then you need to be printing yourself, but everything needs to be intentional. You don't just need to go in the bathroom and sit there and don't do anything, but do what you got to do. Come on. Be intentional when we eat. Can I please just come, come on? Come on now. Come on. And I know sometimes, you know, like I said, I had an affair with Popeye's a few years ago, and I can't forgive it, and I came back. He said, we need to be even mindful about what, when, and how much we eat. That's right. Because there's chemicals and things in the food. And, and you know, what Satan is designed for our demise, God said, I want to turn it around and make it for you good because we need to be intentional. Somebody say intentional. Intentional. My brothers and my sisters, intentionality is simply the fact of being deliberate or purposive. We say in our church that we are living life on purpose, aligning with God's purpose. See, God has a purpose for each and every one of our lives. So it is important for us in order to live life on purpose that we must first of all understand what God's purpose for our life is. All right. All right. I want to say that again. If we're going to live life on purpose and if we're going to align with God's purpose for our life, and he does have a plan for each and every one of us. He right. said in Jeremiah 29 and 11, he says, I know no. the plans that I will have for you. you. So if he knows the plan and we don't know the plan, then quite simply we need to ask the one that has the plan, what is your plan for my life? Because my plan ain't work. You know, if somebody asked me one time, they were asking, they said, what are you doing about this? What are you doing about that? I said, well, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. They said, well, how's that working for you? Wow. And that kind of became my theme now when I look at things. If it's not working for me, then I need to let that go. Wow. So if my plan has not been working, I need to know what God's plan is so I can work his plan. All right. Or better yet, I can let him work his plan out through me. Come on, man. Oh, y'all, excuse me. Come on. Come on, man. I can't even teach, but I'm beginning to feel my help just a little bit. So my question tonight that we ought to all ask ourselves then is, why am I here? I'm not talking about just at this revival, but I'm talking about in life. Why am I here? I'm glad you asked that question. We're here for two particular purposes, and that is number one, to glorify God. Number one. And then secondly, to edify His people. That's right. How do we glorify Him? How do we edify Him? Well, we glorify Him by living a lifestyle that is pleasing unto Him. And we edify one another by building one another up in the faith. And if someone doesn't have the faith, then we simply share the faith with them so that they can have the faith. Right. Come on See, now. my brothers and my sister, if if, 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 if if that was not our reason for being here, then we wouldn't need to be here. All right. See, once we became born again, mm -hmm. we might as well, if we were not going to share God with someone else, they might as well just went on to heaven right then. Amen. That's right. So our purpose is to be his hands and his feet and his mouthpiece in the earth to let other people know about what God did for us. Amen. Amen. I know you're sitting there and you're beginning to wonder because I had you read a couple of verses. 
verses in the text, and you said he's talking about everything but the text. So I want to go to the text because I don't want you to leave here tonight and go get on the phone and get on Facebook and get on Instagram and say, we got a preacher out there who talks loud and talks a lot, but he's homiletically and homonuclearly incorrect and doesn't ever take us to the text. So if you don't mind, can I take you to the text for a few minutes on tonight? Let's go to the text. <laughs>
won't work. It won't work. It won't work. It won't work. It won't work. See, the, the trick of the enemy takes away what Jesus is trying to give us. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So we see Satan's intentional intrusion. But secondly, we see God's intentional investment. Mm. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's, in the, it's in the text. It's in the text. It's in the text. Because Jesus said, He comes to steal everything. Right. But I come that you might have life more. and that you might have it more abundantly. Amen. Yeah. But God so loved the world that He has only got a son that so even him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah. Now, my brothers and my sisters, what we must understand is eternal life with Jesus Christ begins the moment we accept him as Savior. Amen. See, for years we talked that erroneously. So all we thought we had to look forward to was the pie in the sky. But the moment that we have been born again, uh -huh. our everlasting eternal life with Jesus Christ begins right then and right there. Amen. So what Jesus is trying to say is, I want you to have a great life, and as a matter of fact, a more abundant life while you're on. Amen. Amen. And I intentionally invested my son so that you could have that abundant life. That's right. Let me talk about investments for a second. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Many of us save for retirement. Uh -huh. Or we save for vacation. We make an investment, and our return is that when we get to a certain age or a certain amount of years on the job, we will have a check that we can pick up. All right. Or when we get to the cruise, we. we, we it's painful. Amen. Amen. Or, you know, if we don't get, do anything to go spend the weekend in Buckhead, we saved our own money. We made an investment so we could have a return. Amen. Come on. But God says, I invested myself through my son, Jesus Christ, intentionally so you can have an eternal, abundant life that starts the very moment you say, I do. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. 
I'm just saying, all right, all right. <laughs> it's time now for us thinking less of ourselves that God thinks of us. Now then, a little bit later, he said, now don't get haughty, don't get high-minded, be humble, but we need to be confident in who we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Because yes, we are saved by grace, mm -hmm. but His grace has introduced us to a life of more than abundant. Mm -hmm. I told you I had a twofold purpose to talk prophetically, but I also came to encourage this man and woman of God. Amen. Amen. As you go back and go to the text just a little bit, let me back up a little bit. Jesus begins in verse 1 by saying, He that entered not. It by the door into the sheepfold, but climbing in some other way, the same as his feet in a robber. Mm -hmm. Verse 2, he says, But he that entereth by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. He said, The porter, he opens the door, and the sheep hear his voice. Now, this particular sheepfold up at the beginning of the chapter is a little bit different than the type of, of sheepfold that we're looking at when we get down to verse 9 and 10. At the beginning, see what they used to do, they used to have like, and, and, excuse me if we're putting it this way, but like sheepfold tails. There would be a place that, you know, shepherds could bring their sheep and it would be, you know, like almost like a doggy hotel or whatever, but it was for sheep. And they could all go in there, no matter who the sheep were, and they could stay in the fold. And there was a porter that stayed there, just like you would if you were at a hotel today. And what would happen is in the morning, when it was time for the shepherd to leave, he would come and what he would do was call out to his sheep. And when he would call his particular call, the sheep that knew him would be like all these hundreds of, or maybe thousands of sheep in the sheep. Well, how would they know who their shepherd was? Well, they, they knew their shepherd's voice. That's right. And so he would come and he would call and call the sheep, and the sheep would come to the door, and they would follow him because they knew his voice. Amen. Now, notice a hireling, which would be somebody that you would hire to care for your sheep. You know, when I was growing up, you know, my, 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 my grandfather and my uncle, they used to have cattle and they used to have hogs. Mm -hmm. And what we would do if we wanted to put the hogs and the cattle back in the pasture or back in the pen, we had to drive them. Mm -hmm. But with sheep, you don't have to drive them. They can simply, you can simply speak to them and if they know your voice, they follow you. Amen. So my brothers and my sisters, what I want you to do, those that are members of this church, and, and this is a little bit larger than life too, it's imperative as members of the church that we know who our shepherd's voice is. Now, we're talking about intentionality. We need to be keen and in tune with this man and woman of God because they have a loss of vision. They said that the vision and the, 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 the um, theme of the revival was taking the gospel to the streets. So we need to rally behind that. When, and, and when I say rally behind that, we need to be like sheep. When they call for us to come out and be witness and get in the community, we need to be behind them on that because they are shepherd and God has tuned us to their voice. There's a particular reason why you remember this church. There's a particular reason why you're here. Because God has tuned your spirit into their spirit so that you can support them. Amen. Amen. Now watch this. When he goes a little bit further in the text, he says, When he put it forth his own sheep, he called before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And the stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Amen. And then when you go past verses 9 and 10, he begins to talk about the spirit of hiring. You don't have a hiring here. You don't have hiring here. And this is funny because it was ironic that I was asked to come and do this meeting because I just met your pastors a few months ago. They never even heard me preach. And I was like, God, this man called and asked me to do a Bible prayer. I was like, yeah, you talking to me? <laughs> he said, but God said. Amen. And then when I began to, to study and go forth and to pray, and God kept saying, go back to the text. Go back to the text. Go back to the text. There's something here. And then he clarified my assignment. He said twofold. He said, talk about intentionality, but encourage the man and woman of God to keep it going forward because you have a unique man and woman of God who love you and care for you. They're not just here trying to get a check. They're not hiring. But see, the, the, the hiring, what he'll do when the wolves will be rough. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we take for granted the sacrifice of our pastors because, you know, wolves and stuff are coming. They're standing in the, in, in the gap for us. And we, you look up and we're headed down the street. But God said, I want to, to encourage the people of God to understand the man and woman of God that they have and the heart that they have. And God began to show you all's heart. A heart of gold, a heart like no other, a heart for your people, a heart for the community. And he wanted me to encourage you and to admonish you and say, you're right here in this text. You're the Jesus in the text. Only difference is he's the shepherd, you're the under shepherd. But you'll lay across the door for your sheep. Amen. 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 And the least the thing is, is that when you speak, that the sheep can hear your voice. So I want to encourage all the members of Love Christian Center to, to, to pray this prayer when you go home tonight. Say, God, let me hear 
my pastor's voice, voices like never before. Let me be in tune with it. Put the burden of this ministry on me. Help me to go even further than, you know, when they speak it, let me just go with it. Let me just run with the vision because you have put me in this sheepfold. And I don't always, I don't want to run ahead of them, but I want to make sure I'm following them. Amen. Amen. And I'm expounding on the vision because I have good shepherds. That's the word for them. Amen. But let me go back and close up this message. So I only have a few more minutes. We talked about Satan's intentional intrusion. Mm -hmm. We talked about God's intentional investment. Uh -huh. And we see in the text that as sons of God, we have an intentional inheritance based on the promise of God mm -hmm. that we can live an abundant life. Right. But I would be remiss if I didn't tell you or give you some steps or some things that you can take home with you on tonight. Come on now. Of uh, what is the formula? How can I live intentionally? You said that the, the, the message is about intentionality. How do I do this? I see all this in the text, but what can I do to move this ship along? I'm glad you asked. Come on now. Five simple things. Mm -hmm. And I promise I won't be long. Number one, simply have intentional faith. Intentional faith. Believe. God told us in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, that without faith it's impossible to, to please Him. That's right. So we can't even be pleasing to God himself, but we don't have faith. We have dreams, we have aspirations, we know, we ask God what his plan is for our life, but we gotta believe it and we gotta walk by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. So first of all, we gotta have intentional faith. Mm -hmm. But then number two, we gotta have intentional speech. Speech. We gotta be careful what we say. Mm -hmm. This is the formula for intentionality. What I've learned is, a lot of times, we let stuff roll off our lips mm. because you know, it's what we heard, or it's what we're thinking. But we got to be careful what we say because life and death is in the power of the tongue. Amen. Right. Amen. Or the power of life and death is in the tongue. However you want to say it. The bottom line is we speak things into existence. Sometimes not even paying attention to what we say. We used to say, well, you know how folks is. No, we don't. What we need to say is we know that God can change people. Amen. Well, everybody's hurting. Well, they may be, but I got an answer to their hurt. His name is Jesus. Amen. All we have to do is turn our speech around. We have dreams. In Job 22, verse 28, he told us if we decree a thing, it shall be established. We need to make some decrees as believers. Amen. We're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Stop decreeing poverty. Amen. Man, I'm just so broke. No, I'm not. I'm blessed and highly favored. Come on now. I've been to heaven down in my pocket, but I got a debit card. <laughs> Amen. You know what? If my father owns the cattle on a thousand hills, that is totally opposite to what he says about me. So I need to decree, I need to start speaking what God says about me. Amen. Speak nothing less than what God says. Thirdly, we need to have intentional worship. Uh-huh. I'm not talking about coming in here, throwing up our hands, roll on the floor, speaking in tongues, holding at the mouth, playing the tape. I'm talking about how we live. Come on now. Because our life is a life that reflects who we really are. Mm -hmm. If we want to worship God, and that's why it says, they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. He said, the spirit is good, but I, I, I want to know the truth behind your worship. Mm -hmm. Do you love me with all of your heart? Because if you will, you'll you, you keep my commandments. That's right. You'll do what I ask you to do. How, well, I'm not impressed with what people do on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, larger than life. But I, I'm more impressed, or, 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 it, or better yet, it impresses upon me what they're posting on Facebook on Tuesday afternoon. Come on now. Because uh -huh. it's mighty funny how sometimes you can shout out in church on Sunday, but then you be saying some funny things on Facebook because people have gotten on your nerves. Well, there's that speech thing again. Are we going to let people get on our nerves or are we going to reverse that? Because I'm going to be honest with you, I'm the first person that people get on their nerves. But what I'm learning to do is I've got to speak positively. And I gotta make sure that whatever I said, it goes back to what we said at the beginning, that it glorifies God and it edifies. Mm -hmm. And what I've learned about my brothers and sisters over 52 short years of living is that there's always two sides to every story. Uh -huh. And if somebody's gonna get a break, why can't I be the one to give it to them? Mm -hmm. Because we don't know, you're right, there are a lot of hurting people. Maybe the reason someone did something to me or did something to you it's because something on the inside is eating them. If nobody else prays for them, why can't I? If nobody else says something positive about them, why can't I? I'm talking about these are the questions we need to start asking ourselves. It's easy to be down on people. I'll be honest with you, it hurt my feelings. 
when they were, the, the, how they treat some of our political candidates on both sides of the ticket. Right. Because whether you believe what, what Trump says or Carson or Hillary or whatever, they're still human beings. Amen. And that could be me in the life. So we got to learn to love one another because we live a life of worship. And God is looking at our heart. Mm -hmm. Well, our heart is manifest in our actions. Amen. Number four, be an intentional witness. Witness. An intentional witness. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give you a pass tonight because you say, well, if you live a life of intentional worship, of worship and you say the right things and faithful people will see Jesus all. But in Matthew 28, he didn't say nothing about walk around and holy so they could see Jesus. Come on now. <laughs> but he said for us to make disciples of men. That's right. Amen. As a matter of fact, he came back and asked one day and he said, listen, you shall receive power after which the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And I know sometimes, you know, I grew up in, in Church of God Christ, but then I was, you know, ordained to be preaching in the Baptist Church, and I was in the Baptist Church for a lot of years, and, you know, so I was... Starts Pentecostal, and then I was very extreme staunch Baptist at one time, you know, and they were at odds with one another, so I don't know how I ended up with those two. But the bottom line is, if you're used to traditional uh, thinking, that both of them thought they were right, more right than the other. <laughs> the, the, the sanctified folks said, well, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you may say that the Baptist folks said, if you spoke too many tongues, then you do because I order. <laughs> We Baptist around. But the bottom line is, if you self righteous, you're still wrong. Well. <laughs> but it says after that, which the Holy Ghost is still upon you. The Holy Ghost knows no denomination. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit is not Baptist, Church of God in Christ, Assemblies of God, Catholic, Presbyterian, and you know, I'm just a good old Presbyterian. I'm just a good old Christian. Amen. All right, say that. Matter <laughs> Come on, righteousness of God. <laughs> That's what he calls me. Mm -hmm. I said this on Sunday. It was funny. I told our, our people in our church, I told them, I said, take out your compacts. Because you have got them. You want to look at yourself, make sure your lipstick is right. And just take your mirror out and look at yourself. And then say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So we got to be an intentional witness. We got to tell some people about Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Intentionally.
intentional praise. Amen. Amen. Because at the bottom of the, of, of the barrel, that's what I'm going to say. At the end of the day, the bottom line is what I was trying to say. At the end of the day, the bottom line, the, the short story is real simple, my brothers and my sisters. No matter how bad it gets. Come on now. He said again in Psalm 42, verse 5, Why 